Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Oh, we live for you Jesus, in the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. And holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. And holy, there is no one like. Welcome to Worship with Our Saviors Lutheran Church. We are so glad that you are joining us this week. As we begin worship, we hear the story of Peter's declaration of who Jesus is, and we give thanks for all that Jesus is and all that he has done for us. Let us begin in prayer. O oh God, with all of your faithful followers of every age, we praise you, the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation and form us into the body of your Son, that we may gladly minister to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We continue worship in song. Thank you. 
everyone. For the children's message this week, I wanted to begin with a couple of riddles. So if you know the answer, say them out loud. The first is, what has fingers and a thumb but no hand? You got it? It's a glove. It has fingers and it has a thumb, but there's no hand in it if there's not a hand in it. All right, next one. The more you take away from me, the bigger I become. What am I? A hole. The more you take away, the bigger the hole becomes. In today's Bible reading, we hear another question that Jesus asks the disciples, and it kind of seems like a riddle. He, Jesus asks them, who do you say that I am? And Peter responds, you are the Messiah, the Son of God, which was a really big, important phrase that he said. It's one that they discovered all throughout Jesus's life that he preached and he healed people and he fed the hungry. Everything that Jesus had done up until that point pointed to him being the son of God. And Peter says, you are the Messiah, the savior, the son of God. And so I wonder this week, who is Jesus to you? I want to invite you to draw a picture this week of who Jesus is to you. Is he one who um, teaches you things? Is he your best friend? Is he like a parent? Does he speak to you? Does he teach you? Draw a picture and I would love to see it. Have your parents send it to me and I would just love to see who is Jesus to you. But let us pray. Repeat after me, please. Dear God, Thank you for sending Jesus for all that he is and all he does for us. Help us to know him and to make Jesus known. Amen. Thanks, everyone. We continue with the reading of the gospel. The gospel is from Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 20. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the word of the Lord. I begin today by sharing words of grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus answered him, and I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Dear church, with a text like this, it gives us the perfect opportunity to finally talk about church. After five months of online worship, we finally had the opportunity to safely hold an outdoor worship this last weekend at both the Our Saviors campus and at the Celebration campus. And while we are working on many more worship opportunities very soon, it just felt good to be church together, as I like to say, to gather together again. And seeing some of you face to face, and hearing your joy at being at church again, it really helped me to realize just how impactful that word church is. Let's first talk about where this word church comes from. In our text today, again, 
Peter, on this rock, I will build my church. Here, Jesus is saying Peter is the rock. That was his nickname. So in you and through you, the church will be built and will grow. Whenever we read this lesson, we always skip over that word church just so quickly. We all know what church is, right? Or maybe we each have different definitions for church. For some of you, it's not church unless there's an organ playing. For some of you, it's not church unless there's drums and a guitar. For others of you, your family has always sat in the same spot for many, many years. And for you good Lutherans, you know that's in the very back of the church. And for some of you, you've been enjoying the past five months of being able to watch worship right from your home. And that's absolutely okay. This is Ryan. What are you doing in our house? Now, I'm just having some fun while I can. But I hope you understand that we sometimes change the definition of, of church. For Jesus, church was this word called ecclesia. And the word ecclesia, it only shows up three times in our Gospels, and it's only in Matthew's Gospel. So we have to ask the question, what is church? What is ecclesia? If you Google the word ecclesia, you'll basically see that Christian theology, it means both a particular body of faithful people, but also the whole body of faithful. So the church is people gathered here, there, and everywhere, maybe together. Maybe we even need new terms for what church means because we've been gathering online together in new and interesting ways. But what this community does is we confess in the name of Jesus and then we follow the way of Jesus. The book of Acts was really into this, the way. And so we follow the ways, the teachings, the life, the ministry, the death and resurrection of Jesus. So Ecclesia, the church, in our Savior's language, it might not be a location that you worship in, but it's that we are a people who are centered around knowing Jesus and making Jesus know. So church is not just defined by its music or prayer, your pastors wearing fancy church robes, what building you attend, or having your pastor do some really awesome sermons during this pandemic. Church has everything to do with living as disciples of Jesus right here and right now, all to the glory of God. It's how we live it out. Let's go back to Peter. Peter the Rock, he took his calling as a disciple very seriously. He even went to the cross upside down because of this life of faith in Jesus. Thankfully, our means of doing and being church are a lot less dangerous. But our calling is just as necessary as it was for Peter. Church, we are called to stand up for the poor, the outcast, the oppressed, and for those who are displaced. Church, we are called to share our resources with those who have little or none. Church, we are called to lift up people from the depths of despair. Church, we are called to offer a place of silence in a world that has a lot of noise so people can hear the voice of God. It's not just what we do, but it's who we are. It is that love that is lived out that defines us as church. So to be the church and to do that work, I think it's awesome that we have two beautiful buildings at 815 and 919 South Washington Street here in Naperville. I think it's wonderful and awesome that we have amazing staff and leaders and pastors to help guide our community. All of that definitely helps our church locally to be centralized. However, whenever stuff becomes the priority and the community and the way of Jesus gets lost to the plethora of line items or budgets, well, it's then that Ecclesia, the church, that it begins to lose its definition. This last weekend at our outdoor worship, I, I wore a t-shirt to church. But the t-shirt on it, it says, the church has left the building. And I think this is good news for us to share. And it's true. The church, 
how we, the church, live out our baptismal callings is way more than what is happening inside of these church walls. The church has left the building with you. It's about the love that you share day after day after day, a love that is lived out for others. Church, it's about serving others, like loaves and fishes who have fed thousands during this pandemic. Church, it's about calling a family that you used to sit near during worship and simply checking in with them after five months of not seeing them. Just say hello, maybe even ask them what you can pray for. Church, it's about realizing just how loved you are by God and sharing that love with a total stranger. Dear church, I pray that God looks upon favor upon God's ecclesia, church. May God guard us from getting in our own way. And may God ever remind and show us the way that brings life, the life of Jesus. A love that was lived out for you and for me as we go out to know Jesus and make Jesus known. Amen. There's revival and it's spreading like a wildfire in my heart. Sunday morning, hallelujah, and it's lasting all week long. Can you hear it? Can you feel it? It's a rhythm of a gospel song. You can choose it, you can lose it. Oh, there ain't nothing, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. I got an old church choir singing in my soul. I got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful. I got a heart overflowing cause I've been restored. Wander, turn to mountains I can't climb. Oh, you are with me, never leave me. Oh, cause there ain't nothing, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. I got an old church choir singing in my soul. I got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful. I got a heart overflowing cause I've been restored. No, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy Clap your hands and stop your feet Till you find that gospel beat Cause it's all you'll ever need All you ever need Clap your hands and stop your feet Till you find that gospel beat Cause it's all you'll ever need all you ever need. clap your hands and stop your feet to be fine that God's for me because it's all you ever need all you ever need I got an old church choir singing in my soul I got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful I got an old church choir singing in my soul I got a sweet Salvation and it's beautiful. I've got a heart overflowing because it's been restored. There ain't nothing going to steal my joy. No, there ain't nothing going to steal my joy. No, there ain't nothing going to steal my joy. church. I really miss seeing everyone and being in community with you every week. But thanks to technology, you've at least been able to see us and stay engaged in ways you probably never thought before COVID. And while we haven't been able to gather as we have in the past, we are truly blessed by being able to connect in such a unique and meaningful way. And I know we are making Jesus known to more people outside our walls than ever before. And as we continue to move forward, I would like to thank you for your support of our ministry. One of the ways we are moving forward 
is by gaining the ability to live stream our services. And through your continued support and many generous gifts to our memorial fund, we have been able to purchase video equipment for both campuses that will eventually help us live stream and I will need volunteers to help with tech more than ever before. And while there are still some tech challenges we face, our goal is to start live streaming at the beginning of 2021. Meanwhile, we will continue to pre-record our services as we have been, while also preparing the best way for us to come back to in-person worship as safely as possible. Thank you once again for all your support of our saviors, whether it's financially or by your kind words and emails. And may God bless you as we continue worship. Let's join together in prayer. Gracious God, hear our prayer. In the midst of whatever life brings, we pray for your presence to give hope and justice and peace. In the midst of the continuing pandemic, guide us, we pray for a vaccine, a treatment, healing. We pray for all those most impacted, for frontline workers, for those who are sick, for those who grieve, for those whose jobs and livelihoods have been disrupted. We pray for those preparing for the school year, for teachers, administrators, students, parents. We pray for those in the military, for police, firefighters, first responders, elected officials, doctors, nurses, healthcare workers. We pray for all who live with risk for our health. We pray for those who are sick, for those who grieve. We pray for your presence, your healing, your peace. God, be with us all and all of your creation. Fill us with this meal. Fill us with your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. And we continue now with, with Holy Communion. And now, if you've not already done so, is a good time to gather together the elements for Holy Communion. In the sacraments, we have physical elements combined with God's promises and God's grace. And for communion, you have the, the bread or a wafer or some crack or something, and also the wine or grape juice. And as we gather together, gather those elements, and we will continue with Holy Communion. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Now is the time that you, you receive or share the elements, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Receive and share communion at this time. And as we gather again, hear this blessing. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in grace. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace.